sorry I just find out the previous video last question was, was actually wrong because uh, I somehow was doing in a rush and I overlook the fact that it again uh, I think I actually mentioned it is position and this is different from displacement but then somehow I also look, overlook that so the thing is uh, when you do the calculation the whole calculation here is correct so the displacement is really zero and it actually means after 20 seconds the displacement is literally nothing so when you start out with negative 75 instead of going to zero as positioned you actually go back to oops you actually go back to the same spot which is means it is still negative 75 so it must be a point from here to here so of course there are different ways one way is of course it could be a straight line and of course we know it would be impossible that means that it never moves so the other way it could happen is probably it is a curve like this like this and maybe like this right or it could be like this but then in terms of the direction since you are having a positive velocity so it should it should probably be moving upward instead in terms of moving closer to the positive value of the position instead of the negative so it's either this one this one or this one so it is really depending on uh, in terms of in the middle what is the displacement uh, by the time at 10 because this is going to be very likely a symmetrical shape and so we probably should calculate by the time equal to 10 uh, what is the displacement so we should uh, do the calculation again by substituting this into the equation so s equals to ut plus half a t square and then s is unknown u so once again substitute like what we did earlier a is negative 2 t is 10 and then by using calculator it is actually 100 positive so actually that means by the time it reached to 10 seconds the displacement is 100 so the position since it was negative 75 so now it should be plus 25 so it should be a point like right here and so the curve should be more like this okay I didn't draw very well let me try to draw again it's a bit more like this and then more like this okay uh, with the slope initially steeper like what we mentioned earlier that uh, the initial speed was 12 18 and then 16 and 14 and so on and so by 10 actually we can kind of guess it is zero so this is a point where it is at the highest point and then we start to go back down again and going faster and faster in a negative direction okay again I apologize for my mistake in the previous video <laughs>
we should know g is 9.1 but for simplicity we'll take it as 10 and since we take downward as positive we would have a positive acceleration towards the ground while for u notice that it should be negative okay it should be negative 20. part a is asking you uh, the maximum height of it so one thing you should know about mass when it reach maximum height is the velocity equals to zero and so since we want to find uh, the displacement so that we can find the height then we should be able to use an equation that is v squared equals to u squared plus 2as and so v is 0 u is negative 20 squared plus 2 a that is 10 and s is the one that you want to find use your calculator you should be able to find negative 20 meter so if you define upward as positive then of course you'll find it the answer as positive 20 instead so here the idea of negative 20 meter is actually referring to the fact that it will reach to the highest point right here by rising 20 meter and then it will start dropping again so part b is asking you the time it takes to reach the maximum height so basically it's to find t and so uh one there are different ways to do it so one equation uh, could be v equals to u plus at so then v is 0 u is negative 20 a is 10 and t is the unknown so t would simply be 2 second then yeah i think it's uh, straightforward and so let's take a look at part c part c is asking you the time it takes to hit the C. So I suppose it starts from uh, the time where it is flown. Okay, so in fact there are two ways to do it. One way to do it is um, well let me let me show you one way first. So one way to do it is uh, by looking at just the beginning and then you want to see uh, what happened after you move for 30 meter because this is the length of the cliff. So S equals to 30 is a thing that you want to stick with and then once again uh, since downward is positive so it's positive 30 meter a once again is 10 meter per second square u is negative 20 and then you want to know the time so if you look at the equation then we should have s equal to u t plus half a t square and so just substitute so we have 30 u is negative 20 t a is neg a is positive 10 and then t squared so you may notice that this is a quadratic equation so you should be able to use your calculator to solve it directly some of you may use the equation uh, you learn from maths but i would recommend just use your calculator there should be a program to help you to solve so uh, when i'm using mine then i will input um, you know this is in a form of like those equations as in um, finding the roots of y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c so you are going to input a b and c so for a it should be positive 5 b should be negative 20 and c should be negative 30 then in that case i should get uh, the root which means the answer as 5.16 or because usually the two roots or negative 1.16 second so for the answer apparently uh, we would reject the one that is negative because you can't go back to time at least from now so the answer is simply 5.16 second so this is one way of doing it and I do think it is probably I feel is more straightforward uh, the other way that I could show you and you, you can also see it also strongly recommend you to see it uh, let's call it c star so it's another way to do it is from that way you can see uh, the beauty of physics also like it is uh, consistent with different approach like maps is that you can also try to calculate the time from the so-called highest point till it reach the c and then uh, that will be the time it takes to fall and then you have to add 
the time where it takes to go upward, which is what you calculated as two seconds. So um, I think it's longer because you have to do it like twice in that case. So in that case, uh, you may use uh, the initial speed as zero. T is what you want to find. A is once again 10. And uh, the displacement in that case would be 50 because this is 20 plus 30. That makes 50. And so in that case, it will actually be very similar to what you did earlier. As in, uh, you have the same equation. I'm not going to copy again. But then for you, it will be zero. I think this is the best part. Like you can kind of zero up this part so you don't have to solve a quadratic equation. And then half a, a is 10. And then t squared. So t will be by calculator. 3.16 seconds so if you try to think about uh, if you try to add the two seconds from the previous part once again uh, the reason is that 3.16 is only when they go down and then you have to add the time when they go up also two seconds so in total it will still be the same as 5.16 so both ways would do, uh, but it's really up to you which way you do. I'll prefer the original way I, I shown earlier. Okay, so for the last part as part D, it asks you about the speed when it reached the C. So once again, uh, it may be a good practice as you could see what I did also uh, to, to show the um, different information. So that is s equals to I'll, I'll start with the beginning so s equal to 30 a equals sorry negative 30 and then uh, you should have uh, sorry not negative positive and then a should be 10 and then we want we already know the time which is 5.16 and then u is negative 20 actually I, I would not use time because this is run off for sure so we just need to find u, right? So with these three known values, we can already find the unknown v. So I think this is probably the more accurate number. So we will use the equation of this, and then uh, v is unknown, not zero. v is unknown, u is negative 20, a is positive 10, s is positive 30, and then use your calculator. You can then find 31.6 meter per second. Okay, so that is uh, all for such a question. So this is a very typical basic question for free falling. And notice that this is in fact just one dimensional question because it's one dimensional means are only up and down. Uh, in the case where you have also horizontal movement, which we'll talk about it uh, in probably the next section then it will be called as 2D problem and that is projectile motion. For this question, uh, let me summarize the key ideas. So other than using the kinematics equation, the new thing that you should learn is that um, you should realize uh, you have to define the direction. So this is very important that people usually overlook and they, they assign the positive and negative wrongly and you will get um, simply the wrong answer for another situation and the other thing that you need to notice is there are some hidden information in the question for example when the ball is at maximum height it actually means velocity is zero so this is one very common hidden information you can find in the question the other thing that you may want to pay attention is uh, for uh, the using kinematics equation you could actually use different approach but the most important thing is uh, you have to realize the when you apply the equation it must be from the beginning of the point let's say uh, what I do for the first part of C is I use the initial point and then the ending point and then for displacement it's just 30 even though the distance you know is actually the whole thing so if you talk about the distance it's actually 20 plus another 20 because it come down plus another 30 so it would be like 70 but then since the S that we're talking about is displacement, right? So we only use 30. So that makes a big difference uh, when you do the calculation.
and using displacement will only give you the correct answer.